Hey chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over 1.05 chemical versus physical changes. Have your notes ready, but you don't have to write anything down until I bring up the notes on the screen. So for now, just kind of pay attention and listen. Matter exists in three common states and it can change states. So we know this. We know that it can be solid, liquid, gas, and also plasma. And where would you find plasma? In the sun or other stars, in lightning, and a few other places. Matter has mass and volume and exists in three states, solid, liquid, and gas. Matter can change from one state to another when energy is added or removed. Okay, what's the vocabulary word if we're putting energy in or adding energy? That's endothermic. And if we're removing or taking out the energy, what's the word for that? Exothermic. Energy has no mass or volume. So you might have been thinking, well, is everything matter? Well, mostly everything, but energy is not because energy does not have mass and it does not have volume, but it has the ability to cause change. So we're going to talk about two types of changes. The first one is a physical change, such as a change in state does not change the types of atoms or molecules. The identity of the matter remains the same. A chemical change changes the chemical arrangement of atoms or molecules. The identity of matter becomes different. So everything is made up of atoms. And when you put the atoms together, sometimes there are molecules. The number one molecule you should know is water. Do you know water? It's H2O. The H stands for what? Hydrogen. The O stands for? oxygen, and it's H2O, which means that there's two hydrogens for every one oxygen. So H2O is water, and this shows the gas molecules far apart. Here we have liquid molecules pretty close together, and here we have solid molecules in a rigid structure. Are they moving? Yeah, they are. All molecules are always, always, always moving. They might just be vibrating versus going crazy, but they're always moving. So when I have my molecules go from fast to medium to slow and change their arrangements, in every picture, do I still have H2O? Yeah, I still have water. Whether it's steam, liquid water, or ice, it's always H2O. That's a physical change. I made a change, but it's still the same substance. And when I say it's the same substance, I mean the same substance chemically. Because ice is very different than steam, right? I mean, this can burn you. This can freeze your cells and, you know, cause your fingers to fall off if they freeze, right? So very different characteristics, but chemically the same substance. They're all H2O. Now, what about if I put... H2O together with oxygen, I can actually make hydrogen peroxide, or I can take hydrogen peroxide and break it down into water and oxygen. Hydrogen peroxide is that stuff usually in a brown bottle that maybe you have had a nurse or a parent put on a cut, and it hurts a lot. It stings when they put it on to help clean out the bacteria. So this is an example of, if we look here, I have two copies of H2O2. So I have two H's, two gray atoms, for every two oxygens, two red ones. And that's different than two H2O, which is two copies of H2, two hydrogens each, and one oxygen. So this change would be a chemical change because I made a new chemical substance. This change is physical because I have the same type of molecules. And we talked about in one of the previous lessons about how when energy is absorbed or in, which is endothermic, or energy is released, which is exothermic, we have a phase change or a physical change. So sometimes energy being added or removed results in a physical change. Sometimes it results in a chemical change where it makes a new chemical substance. So for this lesson, we're really focusing on is the change you are seeing a physical 
or chemical change. So every time you have a question, ask yourself if change is a matter of style or substance. So physical change is a style change. Physical changes do not result in new substances. Water, whether ice, liquid, or steam, is still H2O. Boiling point and freezing point are just two of several physical properties which identify water. Chemical change is substance change. Chemical changes produce new substances with different chemical makeups and properties than the original substances. When burned, wood produces new substances, one of which is called ash. And of course, there's a smoke too. And remember, whether a change in style or substance, only changes in energy produce changes in matter. Physical changes do not alter the identity of matter. Consider changes of state, such as ice melting or water boiling. The water molecules before and after the changes were not changed themselves. They are still water molecules. They're still H2O. Similarly, if you break a piece of wood, you have two pieces, but each piece is still composed of wood molecules. If you saw or grind a piece of iron, you still have iron molecules before and after. This type of change, where the atoms or molecules are not changed themselves, is a physical change. Now, if you notice, this is like the third slide where we brought up water changing phases. All phase changes are always physical. F -f -f phase changes are f physical. They start the same. Yes, it's silly, but it's a good way to remember. So, f -f phase changes are f -f physical. Physical changes include all the changes of state or the phase changes, such as melting, boiling, condensing, and freezing. Any change that reshapes the substance is also a physical change. For example, when you mold clay or putty, you change the shape, but not the substance. Breaking a glass also changes the shape, but not the substance. Bending a paper clip is a physical change too. Chemical changes. Chemical changes alter the identity of matter. If you spray an iron nail with water, the nail will eventually rust. The iron atoms in the nail combine with oxygen and form rust, which is called iron oxide, which is a different chemical than the pure iron. This type of change where the atoms or molecules before the change are different than those after the change is called a chemical change. When a match burns, the wood molecules change into different molecules, including charcoal. When a bomb explodes, the chemicals in the bomb change into gases and expand rapidly and violently. Like physical changes, most chemical changes are accompanied by changes in energy, usually in the form of heat energy, but sometimes as light or electrical energy or even sound. If energy is given off during a chemical change, it's still called exothermic. If energy is absorbed or energy goes in, it's endothermic. A match burning is a series of chemical reactions. A blacksmith at the Renaissance Fair melts solid iron, then hammers it into shape and lets it cool. After seven weeks, the iron sword rusts. Okay, let's break this down and see which one's a chemical and which one's a physical change. So the first thing that we see is melting. Melting is, what do you think? Well, it's iron before, it's iron after. It's going from solid to liquid, and melting is a f -f -f phase change, and f -f -f phase changes are f physical. Then he hammers it into shape. Okay, it started out with iron, we hammered it. Is it still iron? Yes, so what kind of change is that? Physical. Then he let it cool off. He started with hot iron, now he has cold iron. What kind of change is it? Physical. After several weeks, the iron sword rusts. So he started with iron, and then it rusts. What kind of change is that? That one's chemical. You can't get your nice, perfect iron back anymore because now it made iron oxide. So that would be a chemical change. So this shows how physical changes and chemical changes are happening all the time, and even the same substance can go through a multitude of physical and chemical changes. So matter has mass and volume, energy has no mass or volume, and we're going to talk more about energy later. But energy has the ability to cause change. Matter exists primarily in three states, solid, liquid, gas. 
of course, there's also plasma. Matter can change states with the addition of energy. Adding energy is what word? Adding, going in, endo. Removing energy, remove, go out, exothermic. A physical change does not change the atoms or molecules. Matter remains the same. A chemical change changes the atoms or molecules. Matter becomes different. Okay, for your notes, I would like you to copy down these two bullet points right here for your definitions. So hit pause, copy down those last two for sure. These other ones we should already have in your notes, but if you're like, ooh, I always forget this, write that down too. And then I'm going to transfer over to our notes page. But again, write those down. All right, so in your notes, I'd like you to make a table. So on the left, here are some of the columns. Or sorry, here are the things you're going to write in the rows. And then the next column is going to say chemical changes. And the next column is going to say physical changes. And we're just going to write yes or no in the chemical or physical changes. And so go ahead and hit pause so you can write all these down. And then there are two more rows at the end. So again, hit pause, and then across the top, you should have chemical and physical. So our first category, what are you going to write if it's chemical or physical? And the question says, are atoms molecules rearranged to create different atoms or molecules? And is that true for a chemical change? Yes, it is. What about a physical? Nope. All right. Uh, so then again, of course, add the yeses or noes. What about the next one? Are you making a new substance? If you make a new substance, is that a chemical or physical change? A new substance, yes, for chemical. No, for physical. What about what you start with will have the same chemical makeup as the substance you end with? Is that true for chemical changes? Nope. For physical changes, Yes. Our next one says, can it be exothermic or endothermic? What do you think for those? Yeah, they can both be exo or endothermic because energy changing is what's going to cause a change, whether it's physical or chemical. Is it reversible? Can you get back to your original form? This answer is sometimes. Some chemical reactions you can reverse, some you can't. Like if your bike is outside and it, the iron turns into rust, you cannot get it back into iron. But there are some chemical changes that we can change back, but most we say are not reversible. You can't get back your original substance. For physical, the reason I say usually is because sometimes you can't get back the same form. For example, you have a piece of paper and you rip it in half, it's still paper. So technically you still got paper, which is what you had before. But can you make the paper like magically go back together like it was before? No. So that's why I kind of put usually for that one. Does it change color? They're both sometimes, which for some reason people always think color is one or the other, but no. If you rust, a rusty bike has a different color than a brand new bike. If you had food coloring, to something that changes the color but if you have a glass of water with food coloring if you let it sit out and evaporate you'll see that the food coloring molecules are actually still in the glass and your water evaporated so you can still change it back next one is smell a good indication for chemical yes a lot of times with chemical changes there's a smell usually not with physical and then I just wanted to write down a few other examples. So chemical, anytime you have burning, explosions, or digestion. Think about it. What goes in is a lot different than what comes out, right? So anything that's digesting, think of anything that's alive, whether it's rotting or fermenting. If it's digesting in some sort, it's a chemical change. Examples of physical, tearing, folding, all the phase changes, dissolving. For some reason, dissolving trips people up a lot, but dissolving is a physical change. Okay, for your worksheet, it's pretty long this time. In fact, it's pretty much probably the longest one you're going to get all year. Um, but that being said, this pretty much goes over all possibilities that I could think of, and it shouldn't take you that long. If you feel like you're 
really double guessing yourself and really frustrated, come see me. Otherwise, go ahead, finish up and take the quiz. Have a good day.